I spend a lot of time lately talking to both groups of students, professionals, and I hear a lot of the same themes. On the one hand, I hear people worried about pensions lost and the financial crisis. They're worried about unemployment, social unrest. They're worried about extreme weather and the effects environmental changes are already having on their livelihoods. But on the other hand, I hear an extreme amount of passion for change and an optimism for what is possible. I think these type of I think these type of conversations really reflect what is happening in business management education and a revitalization that is happening in the system. I'm an MBA student, so we do spend a lot of time looking at the accounting and the finance and operating models that have driven us to the state that we're in today. But it's a new type of program and this MBA program and it it's looking to really embed sustainability into the DNA of business management education. So in every single subject, in those operating and accounting and the economic models, we look at not just where that has driven us for finance, but what those effects have had on the social and on the environmental changes we are seeing as well. Um, it's a unique partnership between the World Wildlife Fund at the University of Exeter and about a dozen different corporates. And I think it really reflects the type of type of collaboration that is needed in the business world today. Um, there's an African proverb, if you want to go far, if you want to go fast, go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that really reflects these type of partnerships that are pushing us forward farther. And sustainability really requires us to, to look at the interconnectedness of everything. In the end, that really is what sustainability is. And so I think we need to begin looking through all these different different perspectives together to understand how we're going to move forward together. Um, but this One Planet MBA, this integration of sustainability into business management education, this is not niche. We are the vanguard of what will become the standard in business management education. Last fall, across 950 cities in 82 different countries, the world saw a wave of protests and demonstrations against economic inequality, corporate greed, brought on by the protests started in Wall Street in New York. And right, north of the, or right up from there in Boston, a group of Harvard students, undergraduates, 17, 18, 19, they walked out of their Introductory to Economics course. And they, published, they, they joined a greater Occupy Education protest that were happening in Boston at, at the time, and about 70 or so from a class of 700, but about 10%, stood up quietly, they walked out, and they wrote a letter to their professor, published it, and it was published in the Financial Times. And I just wanted to read a quick excerpt, excerpt from it, to kind of give you some of the thinking that these, these 18, these 19-year-old students were thinking. It says, today we walk out of your class, Economics 10, in order to express our discontent with the bias inherent in this introductory economic course. We are deeply concerned about the way this bias affects students, the university, and our greater society. As Harvard undergraduates, we enrolled in Economics 10, hoping to gain a broad and introductory foundation of economic theory that would assist us in our various intellectual pursuits and diverse disciplines, with ranges from economics to, to government, to environmental science and public policy and beyond. Instead, we found a course that espouses a specific and limited view of economics that we believe perpetuates problematic and inefficient systems of economic inequality in our society today. So these students were sick and tired of being taught false neoliberal economics that assumes infinite substitution of land, labor, capital, in a perpetually growing macro economy on a finite planet. Infinite growth on a finite planet. Any type of teaching or thinking of this type is at best outdated and dangerous. Um, so the students spoke, they wanted more. They weren't asking for different answers, but they were asking for an unbiased perspective, and they were asking for different questions so that they could go out and solve these challenges to these 21st century challenges, because quite honestly, the economic system spawned by those economic theories is broken. But when the, when the financial crisis happened, a lot of fingers were pointed at, at, business, at business schools, and 
we're sitting now at a triple crisis. So it's not just the financial crisis, but it's also the social, the or the social and the environmental crisis. So as much as business schools were to blame for the first, then they are too for the ecological and the social breakdowns. And I don't actually think that that you can blame any one professor, or blame any one sector or nation for that matter. It's it's so much bigger than that. But the inherently true connection that was being made in these accusations is that business schools are teaching about the economy in a way that is devoid of nearly any critical conversation of sustainability and human well-being. So we fail to understand the, comp the complexity of our world because we succeed to ignore the existing interconnections. I heard this recently at a conference, and it spoke exactly to what I've been thinking, and that's that it's just the irony that in such a globalized world, where we are so connected from technology, from social media, from transportation, that we're failing now more than ever to see our true interconnectedness. This is a friend, a good friend of mine, and colleague on the One Planet MBA, Amina Emrolahi Biuki. And Amina is from Iran. He's an incredible young man, and he started his own business. He identified that they didn't have mechanical car washes. At that time, five years ago, they didn't exist in Iran. So he imported the machines, he set up the business, he, uh, he added onto it a coffee shop, also a kind of fast food restaurant onto it as well, and it's a great model, and he franchi it's been franchised, he's franchised it across five different cities in Iran. Uh, this is actually him receiving in 2009 the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award from the Vice President of Iran. And his business has great elements of social and environmental thinking of it. He uses the latest water capturing techniques and water recycling technologies. Um, he also noticed that his mother and his sister didn't feel comfortable going into that type of atmosphere, that male-dominated atmosphere. So he decided early on that only women were going to be employed in the coffee shops, so that the women, other women could come there and do their errands and feel comfortable and feel safe. And so Amin and I were in a sustainable and responsible innovation course a couple months ago. And we were put on a team together with us and three other people and to go out to Italy, do a consulting project, an innovation audit on a company. And in preparation for that, we decided we would run kind of a mock, a mock interview or a mock audit, with, and we, used, we would use Amin as, as in his company as the example. So we started running through some of the questions with him, and we asked, you know, about the innovation processes, the learning in the organization, and we got to some of the strategy questions. And we started asking, you know, where do you see your company in, in 10 years? And where do you, where do you, what's your vision then? And he kind of kind of answered, but kind of went around the question. And we came back, we said, no, no, I mean, you know, we talk in class and we talk all the time about the need for long-term thinking. You must, you have this incredible business, you know, you, you're a great businessman, you must have a long-term vision and long-term plan. And, and he, he said, yeah, yeah, I, I understand. And, and I understand, we do talk about that all the time. And he looked at us, and he's an extremely humble and humble man, and he looked at us, he said, you know, but to be honest, it's really hard to plan two years out, one year out, when I don't know in what state or even if my country will exist in two years or next year. And I tell this story because I think it highlights the complexity of the sustainability imperative. That's not just long-term thinking, that it's not just environmental or social good. It's every, all of those things, and it's so much more. And that's why it's so important that we are having these conversations today and continually from our classrooms and into our boardrooms every day. We need to get better at asking the right questions that think about the responses and the consequences on the whole system. And these questions, they matter. I mean, I'm from the United States. I mean, it's from Iran, two very different countries, um, and two countries that are giving a lot of answers lately from their own, but maybe two countries that aren't asking the right questions that think about the whole system. And I can think of no better group of people than right here at an International Ideas Festival who would grasp the vital importance of the need to be producing agents, and change, agents of change through rethinking, reimagining, reshaping how we educate our future business leaders. 
it's, the importance is there, and it, we need to be producing the type of people who can think and act outside those bubbles, outside the economic bubbles of the last 50 years, outside the industrial age bubble of the last 200 years, the type of people that can, that can create the revolutions that legitimize this thinking and acting to live beyond the bubbles, and that can move us towards a sustainable economy. The environmentalist and a great entrepreneur and hero of mine, Paul Hawken, once said, hope only makes sense when it doesn't make sense to be hopeful. And I know some of these challenges may have sounded daunting and may have sound, sounded huge, and, and they are, but I personally am more hopeful than ever. This is a painting by a beautiful friend and another colleague of mine, Hasma Rashid, and it portrays some of, the, some of the different countries that our cohort is from, from Japan to Angola to Colombia, and Hasma is from the Maldives. And the Maldives is a country who, beautiful country with a fragile democracy, who I think is feeling more than ever and more than anyone firsthand the interconnectedness of this world through rising sea levels that are threatening the, nation, the island nation's existence. But a country with hope and a country who's working with the international community to create change, collaborating to create change. And I absolutely believe this is the most, most thrilling time to be alive. And what excites me most every day is that we, as humanity, do not have to accept what is out there. We have so much power, our businesses, it, it matters because we have so much power to, to harness the, the positive good and the positive impact that we can spread. And it matters what you're doing. It matters that these businesses are going out and doing that. And it is happening. It is happening right now, and it's starting with the broadening of our mindsets. It's happening with the shifting of our mindsets and the shifting of our perspectives, and it's happening with the future leaders through education.